What's up Diablo 4 players? Today I wanted to talk about a very interesting subject and it's going to be a discussion video around the subject of us getting weaker as the game progresses. Now, normally in a lot of video games you get some sort of power creep, but what I find very interesting with Diablo 4, and this is an open discussion video, so feel free to let me know how you feel about any of the things that we're going to be talking about, but in most games you get more powerful and then there's harder forms of content for you to actually consume, therefore, well, there's a reason why you are getting stronger. But what I find very interesting and backwards with Diablo 4 in terms of its game design is that we are getting nerfed heavily, and then we lose out on the hard content. Like, we lost on Avatar of Seer, which was the hardest form of content that this game has ever seen. But then on top of that, we also get nerfed. So it's like, we're playing the new season to become less powerful, to fight less powerful things. How does this even exist in terms of, like, a game design? Like, I don't know how this idea would even cross line in the idea of being pitched to someone and then saying, yeah, it sounds great. Let's go ahead and nerf their builds, and then let's not have the hard form of content. So then the newer builds aren't as powerful as what we had in Season 2. And that's why I wanted to make this video. So now that we have kind of like the concept out of the way, let me go and actually kind of explain and break down some numerical stats so you understand like the whole point of me making this video is to kind of see where this game is going in terms of direction. So starting right off, in Season 2 we had some bug skills. And while I want to say I totally understand, certain things are going to be bugged and they weren't actually fixed. But there are certain things that like need to be fixed. And I am specifically talking about Ball Lightning because this build was so overpowered and it hit so fast that it actually caused the game to lag. If it has anything to do with the game not running smoothly, they can totally nerf the amount of times it takes, but then just up the damage so it's basically the same, right? So there's like a buff and a nerf. There's a give and a take to where it maybe is relatively balanced. Perfectly balanced. But to go from, let's say, 200% increased attack speed, which is what Ball Lightning used to have, to 25, it doesn't make a player excited to hop into the next season. And I see this consistently. Do I have to level up a new character to play the new season? And the answer is yes, again. But on top of that, it's to feel weaker. I just don't get this as a concept. You need to have, at least from my viewpoint, and I'm curious to know your guys' viewpoint as well, if you're having a new season, shouldn't you get more powerful and have new things to actually fight? I'm sure the new, like, you know, Uber boss will maybe be a challenge for your very first time, maybe at level 80, but I want to say it's probably going to be a cakewalk. Like, I was really expecting Duriel to be really hard, and once you get powerful enough, you just delete him, and then you keep on farming him again and again. That's kind of like the end game that we have uh, at the moment for, like, the Uber bosses, right? Because we have no Avatar of Zero. Uh, but with things like the Hoda being bugged, Twisting Blades, Ball Lightning, Calm Points, all these things, even Poison and Butte, all these things were kind of bugged. And, well, you know, something things aren't working as intended. I get it. They have to be nerfed. But you can also maybe just look at buffing some of the skills that are kind of unutilized. I'm talking about things like Whirlwind. There are fan favorites that just simply don't have the ability to be played at all in terms of the end game when you can compete with like some of the, the other meta skills in the game. But also want to kind of take a look at like what we kind of lost out on. Now these were kind of niche and I want to talk about season two here in this video uh, because it was the last season that we had. So Domination of Flowing Veins were a little bit like niche but these did increase your damage by a significant amount if you could use both of these. Uh, but the thing that everyone used was basically Prey of the Week and then Ravenous and then the ability to apply vulnerability on, on all classes was really good with the Vampiric powers, right? And this season, I was thinking about, like, well, what are we getting in return? Because remember, we're going to be getting a pet. It's going to do damage that's supposed to scale with us. However, there are some problems with that that we'll also talk about. Keep in mind, at the moment of me making this video, I have not tested any of the pets out. I have not tested, like, any exploits with the pets. But I think, objectively, we can say there's no way that we're going to get a Tears of Blood plus 1,000% damage. It's unrealistic to get those numbers unless we have another bug or an exploit to actually have this happen. But... Nonetheless, Ravenous, most builds would get about 60% uh, increased attack speed, but 80% attack speed, that's basically twice the amount of times that you'd be able to hit almost at the higher end, as well as like adding Prey on the weekend, maybe a couple other ones. You can't really compete with uh, that realistically, plus another 1000% damage. Like we're going to be objectively weaker than we were previously. And we don't have any forms of higher tier content other than these little like vaults, which don't even drop uber uniques because they want us to continuously go back and do Duriel again, which again is another backwards mechanic to the progression in which like the player would want to engage with. And on top of that, we lose out on anticipation, which gave us a cooldown reduction for our like ultimate, which is kind of hard to replace as well with the Sentinel. Now there is something with the Sentinel where it attacks and it can apply vulnerability uh, with one of the stones called Breaking Support, which has a chance to make enemies vulnerable. But the problem is, is sometimes the AA doesn't target the thing that you want. Instead of targeting the elite, it might target something super far away and it makes that thing vulnerable. And you're like, well, what the heck now? I have to wait for this thing. Whereas previously with the Vampiric Powers, you would just hit the thing. And that's why I've never really enjoyed certain pet builds. Sometimes it's fun to mess around with it, but then that's a dedicated pet build. Another thing is 
this is a complaint for almost another video, but why do we not have a proper summon Necromancer? <laughs> that is still wild that we're into season three, and it still doesn't seem like the Necromancer is going to be good for like a pure summon Necro, no ring of Medlin, because Medlin, arguably, you still have to like proc it because you still have to attack. It doesn't work in the way that a minion build should be designed, and that's why I feel like I wanted to make this video because there's certain things that are so backwards that we'll talk about more in a second here. But yeah, we're not going to be able to get like a Tears of Blood, same amount of damage. And then and there's massive nerfs to the Hoda, which I guess it was bugged, but we lost out basically half the damage on Hoda, but overpower basically just got cut in half, right? Which is massive. Ball lining, I already mentioned, it was from 200 to 25. Rogue had close quarters, which was a it had like 40% um, of your uh, damage to crowd control, and now it's only 10. And then Shred got massively nerfed, cut more than half over there. So there's some massive big nerfs, right? Uh, but what are we getting in return? Okay, let's look at that because there's a give and a take right so here's what we have so in this season we lose out on the other things that i mentioned but we still gain some stuff so in this season we have plus four to skills which is arguably 20 percent of your base dps which is better than a multiplicative because it's what everything scales off of uh, that's why harlequin crest is so powerful so that's pretty good and that's in one of like the, the stones but it can only activate on your pet actually using it so there's again pets can be kind of a harder thing to manage because they might not target the thing that you want and then on top of that you can get the pet to apply conditions that's a slow a burn a bleed a poison that you normally may not be able to normally get in certain categories and that could be pretty big for the sorceress when you uh, add the Talrasha rig so there's like some extra damage that you get but overall is it going to compete with an up to 80 percent attack speed hell no <laughs> these are like gigantic differences however we don't even have harder content to consume so then we're just less powerful but there's less things to do like again this is where i feel like maybe they didn't learn and there was a, a post where they did in a campfire chat when they were talking about the nurse in season zero where they just completely just destroyed the game and the people that bought the game earlier if you guys remember gore's devastating grips look at it uh, if you just click just go to youtube look at it that that item would charge up and channel and get to get like astronomical amounts of damage it could scale infinitely and it was really cool and only a few people could actually play with that because they nerfed it so fast that it was unplayable. There was also a invincible rogue build that could no longer exist because, well, they made Inner Sight have an internal cooldown, and there was like a later on as instinct passive board that allowed you to, again, be covered pretty much invincible with the rogue. Uh, but these things that existed in the game never got to see a lot of play for the majority of the player base because you had to get the pre order super mega edition before they just literally nerfed everything in the Paragon board, got basically cut in half, and it's not fun. And then they're like, guys, we learned, and I think it was Rod Ferguson that said we gave too much of the medicine and we didn't give any sugar. So basically they gave us some buffs after it, but it still was not the same when they nerfed CDR and then they like, we're like, okay, well, we're going to add some other things that can roll cooldown reduction that normally couldn't roll cooldown reduction. But at the end of the day, it's like they still really didn't learn their lesson in my personal viewpoint. I'm curious to know, how do you guys feel about that? When they're nerfing, you know, our damage and stuff, well, we still don't have any harder forms of content to consume. It just seems very backwards. But I also wanted to mention some of the problems that this AI could have with the pet. Like, the pet AI could be bad. And another problem, even though the pet's supposed to be able to do kind of the same amount of damage that we deal, the problem is, is that you don't have core mastery or, like, whatever, like, you know, skill type that it is that wouldn't apply on the uh, minion or on the pet and at the end of the day it would, been, it would have been cool to kind of see these powers either be a pet or it could actually be something that you would be able to like use yourself like i think that there were some really cool ideas with these stones where like all of the projectiles would home in but that only works on the pet why doesn't that just work on our skills and a lot of these pets skills are actually base skills like there's literally incinerate that just like chains and there's also chain lightning that shoots out like these are literally copy and pasted if you look at some of the designs in even season two with one of them is like how from below where these like uh skeletons walk and they explode with like a corpse explosion those things are already in the game and i'm really kind of worried about diablo's future in terms of like how are they actually making some of these changes in the game in terms of its progression uh, as a game itself when we're talking about having these seasons i want to feel more and more powerful but also have reward proportional to the difficulty uh, as in if these new vaults are the new thing that they wanted to do why don't they drop uber uniques it's a, such a simple like no-brainer thing have us do the new content versus going back and doing durial again and again only to get the same uber uniques to feel weaker than we were in season two so my question really is for this video is how do you guys feel about any of the subject matters that we're talking about do you guys feel like they learned their lesson 
or do you feel like it's backwards? Because I genuinely feel like it is backwards in terms of the way that they are progressing the game. But let me know your thoughts down below as this is a discussion video. Let me know how you feel about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and made you think about something new. And obviously as uh, the season comes out, because I'm recording this before the season comes out, in maybe a week or two when they can maybe follow up maybe i'm completely wrong and we're going to be 10 times as more powerful but even if we are what are we going to go do farm durio for five hours a day uh until we get our uber uniques and then what are we doing sigil 100s like wants more end game and i think that's something that the game is still lacking sadly at the end of the day but again let me know your thoughts thanks for watching if you enjoyed it drop a like subscribe to you i'll catch you in the next video peace out